Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video today. My name is Tobias, and in this one, we are going over episode 13 titled Warlords. And let me just say, probably one of the best episodes of the season that I've seen so far, at least in my opinion. Uh, so we're going to go through everything that happened in this episode uh, and go through what exactly it means for the rest of the season because things are definitely ramping up here on The Walking Dead. We're definitely kind of seeing the little seeds that are being planted for what's going to happen for the rest of the season. So we're going to go through all that, and then I'll give you a few predictions for what I think will happen in the next episode because we were left on a pretty big cliffhanger. Spoiler warning for anyone who has not seen the episode yet, I will be going through pretty much every aspect of the episode, so definitely go watch that first. But if you do enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like on it and also subscribe for more Walking Dead reviews like this one. So the episode starts out with Lydia, who we haven't really seen a lot of this season. There's so many characters for The Walking Dead to kind of like focus on, so we haven't gotten a lot of screen time for her yet, but she does get the focus for at least the first 15 minutes of the episode or so, so it's pretty good to see that. And at the beginning, Lydia is actually leaving to go to the Commonwealth because she doesn't think that things things are really going to change at the hilltop and she wants a better life for herself. But just as she's about to leave, some kid on a horse who actually got shot in the side rides up to the Commonwealth and actually dies while telling Lydia that they were all slaughtered or they were all killed or something like that. And the kid gives her a map of where to go, so she goes to Maggie to try and convince her to help these people out because obviously they're in danger. It takes a little bit, but Maggie finally agrees to go and we actually see them riding around in a truck, which was pretty interesting. I feel like they may have gotten that truck possibly from the Commonwealth because I don't remember seeing a truck any time before for this. It's always been horses for the past couple of seasons on The Walking Dead, but it was pretty cool to see. Kind of reminded me of the old days when they just ride around in the cars and they'd be talking about stuff. We do get some of that in this episode because Lydia is trying to talk to Maggie about why she doesn't want to join the Commonwealth. And Maggie actually gives a really cool story about Herschel and how people were trying to buy out his farm and they offered him about three times the amount his farm was worth during a drought because they were trying to do it when the farmers are the most desperate, but Herschel didn't give up and he kept his farm going even though it was really hard during the drought to do that and he didn't even use any of the food that these people gave him for their horses or any of their cattle or anything. So it was a really inspiring story that Maggie told, but it doesn't really convince Lydia that things are going to change at the hilltop. She just wants a normal life because she grew up basically as a whisperer for most of it. And it is a good reminder of where Lydia came from because she used to be such a center point of the story, especially when Henry was around. And so from there, they actually are riding down the road and they see three dead Commonwealth soldiers walking around as walkers and Aaron is running up to them and they're all really confused about what exactly happened. And then we cut back to a week prior. The thing that this episode does is it actually cuts back earlier and earlier in the timeline by a couple of weeks to show exactly how everything was planned out and went down. And I actually really like that they did it that way instead of doing it in more of a linear story. They actually kept jumping backwards to explain things. And I don't know, it was just a little different. It kind of switched things up a little bit. So when we flash back a week ago, we see Gabriel and Aaron and they're at church. And it looks like Gabriel's actually kind of gotten some of his faith back. We didn't really see a lot of that on screen after the whole Reaper arc, but it looks like over the last couple of episodes and the couple of months that they've been at the Commonwealth, he's actually been regaining his faith and really enjoys being a priest again. So it's cool to see that he's, you know, feeling a lot more positive about things. As you see from Gabriel throughout the episode, it definitely doesn't change the badass that he's become. He's definitely changed as a person still, even if he has gained his faith back. He still does not trust people the way that he did before, and he doesn't give people those second chances like he used to as well. He's not afraid to speak up either, and that's something that's really awesome about Gabriel is he definitely tells people what he thinks when he thinks it. And we actually see that when Gabriel Gabriel interacts with this new character we have in the episode. I believe his name was Carlton. I don't actually remember, but Carlton or wherever this guy is, he is a really good character in the episode. He actually plays a really interesting character who has a lot of layers to him. It almost looks like he definitely has some mental health issues. He's going through some crazy stuff because he says that he's four years sober apparently, but then he keeps on doing this weird thing where he'll lick alcohol off of his finger and stuff like that. And overall, he was just a really weird character. And he definitely was one of the center points of the episode, especially when we see what the real story was between him and Lance with their plan to actually take down this whole community of 40 people at this apartment complex. And they convince Aaron and Gabriel that they're actually there to recruit these people. So they use Aaron and Gabriel to get in there as the nice guys in order to take that leader out. And the leader guy was pretty cool too. I don't know who plays him or what his name was, but he played a pretty badass guy. He kind of lost it on them at one point and scared the hell out of that Carlton character. I definitely apologize if I'm getting that name wrong and have to look that up afterward. Just when they're about to convince this leader to let them go when they get trapped in there, the new crazy Commonwealth guy ends up killing all the guards in the room and taking the leader hostage. And he does some crazy stuff to him. He starts beating the hell out of him and pistol whooping him with the gun. And it's all over the fact that apparently this community had taken down a Commonwealth convoy a few weeks back. And that's what Lance told him. But we don't know if that's actually the case or not because we never saw it 
happen, and the leader claims that it didn't. Is Lance just doing this for no reason? Is he just wanting to take out this community just to prove that he's strong? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense when it comes to that, but we're gonna have to see what they do in the next episode, and what actually happened with this community, because there's no proof that they actually took any of those weapons. And just when the leader is about to say, if we took any of those weapons, don't you think we'd be using them? Carlton, or whatever his name is, just kills him right there. And just when that happens, Gabriel actually punches Carlton and he gets cuffed up by a Commonwealth soldier. And things are definitely starting to go off the rails at this point. Aaron wants to get the hell out of there. Carlton almost freaking kills him, but the gun wasn't loaded with any more bullets, thank God, or we would have just lost Aaron right there. He was so close to death, but he didn't die. And so he ends up running away, and Gabriel escapes, and we don't see how he escapes just yet. Until we do another flashback, and we see Negan. And he actually met up with that young kid who showed up to the hilltop at the beginning of the episode, and Negan's the one who told him to get Maggie to help out Aaron and Gabriel. So it's all starting to come together at this point. And that's what I mean when I say it's awesome how the story just kind of came together towards the end of the episode and things made a lot more sense. And then after Negan meets with this kid, he actually goes inside of the apartment complex and helps Gabriel escape. And then we finally see how that happened. Then we reach towards the end of the episode here and things are starting to go crazy. So Carlton's up there pushing people off the roof who don't tell him where the weapons are. And clearly these people probably have no idea what he's talking about because it might have never happened. Lance probably just made this up. So he keeps killing people and he's about to come into the apartment complex and start killing everybody else and that's when Maggie, Aaron, and Gabriel show up as well and so now that all of our characters are in this building together what exactly is going to happen in this next episode? Things are going to definitely ramp up pretty far. We see that Daryl's in the next episode. We see Carol. It seems like everybody's stories are like coming together in this next episode. It almost feels like a finale type of episode next week, and I cannot wait to see what happens. There's definitely going to be some Commonwealth versus Alexandria stuff going on here. I think we're finally going to see what happened in that original Season 11 Part 2 trailer, where we saw Aaron and Daryl killing off those Commonwealth soldiers. I think that's all going to happen next episode. So obviously things are going to go pretty crazy, and there's going to be some repercussions for our characters back at the Commonwealth, whether it's it's getting them kicked out or killed off or imprisoned or something like that. Things definitely aren't going to be good for our characters because some of the blame is probably going to fall on them for sure and definitely not this Carlton guy. It's going to be really interesting to see what they're going to do the next few episodes because the part two finale is coming up in about three weeks. So we're definitely building towards something huge here if they're already doing an episode this big next week. But with that being said, guys, let me know down below what you thought of this episode. I'll have that trailer breakdown up for you guys shortly. Please stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys all in that next video. Take care.